Good morning, everybody. Mrs. Coghill. Uh, Jessie's saying good morning, too, so y'all give her a minute. Okay, she's finished. So, here I am at the, at the barn, and there's a reason for that. It's not to show you my wonderful boys that follow me everywhere I go. It's a little bit more complicated than that. You guys know that we've been working on putting posts in for our fence. And Friday evening, well, listen and see if you hear anything. Did y'all hear that? I'll finish when I get in. Friday evening is when we rented the post driver. And I wanted to get a good head start on the work that we had cut out for us on Saturday morning. So, um, the machine requires gas and we didn't have a lot of gas on hand. So I told Jason I was gonna run up to the gas station and pick up some gas. Well, there was, which I'll just saw. Um, nobody around us has a dog like this. Um, she was covered in fleas very dehydrated and needed help. I knew that she needed water, so immediately offered her water. She drank and she drank and she drank. It didn't stop there because she was covered in fleas. And she was miserable from itching. So I gave her a little bit to calm down and I took her to the garage where we have a shower and I used um, some shampoo to get rid of the fleas. So while I had reservations about putting her into a situation like the shower that she may not be comfortable with, I knew it was for her own good. At this point, it's getting on up into um, the night and I didn't know what I was gonna do because my first thought was, I just want her to feel safe. And the only way that I knew to do that was to bring her to where I am now, which is the milking room. We have a mini split that stays the same temperature. So I did just that. I put her in the milking room and I offered her food and left water in the milking room. The next morning, the, um, the food was gone and she had drank a lot of the water and I had left some, um, some, some doggy pads, puppy pads in, in the room. So hopefully she would use those if she did have to go. And there were an infestation of worms. I have some dog wormer that is from the vet. Mind you, wormer that's from Walmart or your farm stores is not the same strength that you can get from your vet. So I administered to it to administer the wormer to her by weight. But by the next morning, which uh, it's still the weekend, she um she I could visibly see a change in her. She felt so much better. Felt so much better. Knowing that the wormer had, had done its job and I had gone enough time to try something else besides just worming her, I gave her the flea medicine. And the next day, she was even better. She, you could see a physical change in her, just her demeanor. She, um, she, she didn't seem so worried. She wasn't itching. And that brings me to where we are now. I want to make sure that she doesn't have a microchip. The only, only thing that I'm concerned about is if she's been gone for months. I'm gonna take her to the vet and I'm gonna have her scan for a microchip. Of course, I have checked with the neighbors. I have scouted all the lost and found pages. I've done everything in my power to make sure nobody's missing her. So my last step is to have her scan for a chip. And I'm gonna do that today. I've got an appointment already to take Bramble and Biscuit 
to have their shots. So um, I'm just going to take her along. It won't take them but a second to scan her and make sure that's not there. And um, we'll find out more. scan for a microchip and unfortunately we did not find one so it looks like we're um, we may be in this for the long haul so the dog and the cats have never seen each other but they're doing very well and Bramble thinks that her leash is just awesome Bramble, she's got a play toy attached to her, doesn't she? Oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, so here we are, back from the vet with an old dog that does not have a microchip. She's walked around with me outside here on the farm and she doesn't, um, she's not alarmed at the animals at all. I've even held her while in the chicken area to be sure that she doesn't, you know, have any killing instincts, so to speak. Uh, even though she's very tiny, she only weighs nine pounds. A uh, dog that is sometimes small in nature has a tendency to want to, not to say that other dogs can't, but small dogs in my history have had a tendency to want to chase. And she's not interested. She's not in the least interested in any animal here on this farm. Um, I was letting her stay in the barn for a few nights and she really just didn't want to be by herself. I don't think any of us really want to be totally left alone. So she has now been staying inside the house and all the dogs get along with her fine. Of course, it was a little chaotic to begin with because everybody had to, to establish their dominance, so to speak, let them know that they've been here longer than her. But under supervision, all is now well. And Tucker's coming to visit us. And she's seen Tucker, as you can see, she's looking at Tucker right now. And she has no expression whatsoever. She's not in the least concerned about Tucker. And Tucker, you don't care either, do you? I didn't mention this earlier, but I was ecstatic to find out that she's heartworm negative. I don't know how. I do know that she, I now have her own heartworm prevention per the vet's orders, um, what to, what to use for her, what's, what's best for her. And she, she's, she's been given her heartworm treat, her heartworm preventative already. So as long as she's in my care, there's no chance that that's going to happen, which just is a relief because I did not want her to have to, to go through the heartworm treatment if she were to be, have been heartworm positive. It's not an easy, um, it's not an easy treatment for any dog, much less one her age. She has absolutely no top teeth. teeth. Um, so the vet advised me to use a senior food, which I have researched and I found what I feel is the best for her. And I am moistening the food to, to help her easily digest it. Another thing that I now have to worry about is the vet doesn't think she's spayed. So while I couldn't see a scar, I certainly was hoping that she was spayed. And the vet has told me that if she were to be uh, pregnant, I'll know very soon. I'll start to see changes and we'll just hope that she's not and that we, once she's once she's healthy enough that we can have the procedure done under 
under my vet care. I'll end this on a positive note because I'm gonna go freeze dry some watermelon. It's something that I've been wanting to do and I would planned to do it in this video anyway and then this happened. So y'all come with me while I freeze dry my watermelon. Okay, so I got, I purchased uh, four watermelons and it may not, it, I may not use four watermelons, but if I don't, that's okay because I can always freeze dry another batch. We can eat them fresh, but I didn't know how many it was gonna take. So I had to have a starting point. What I'm using is a seedless sweet watermelon. And I thought a seedless may work out best simply because I don't want to freeze dry seeds. Um, it may work out fine, but I just ha had in my mind that freeze drying seeds was not going to turn out very well. So I kind of got an idea of what I want to do and I want to cut my watermelon into slices and then take the rind off. And I'm thinking that if the watermelon is in bigger pieces, then it'll come out in a, a bite sized piece that, because I, I feel like it's gonna shrink. Watermelons have so much water in them that it may not be much left if I do little pieces. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to slice it and then take the rind off and see what happens. All right, so this watermelon's got a very thick rind on it. So I'm gonna start with this piece here. And you can see, I mean, there's a lot of rind in this watermelon. So it may be a good thing that I did buy four of them. I'm gonna take a taste of it and see how it is. If I don't know how it is initially, I certainly won't know if my finished product is a reflection of the bad watermelon or if it's didn't turn out right. Very good. Very good and very sweet. So I, I got a much smaller knife so that I can cut the watermelon around the rind. And this is what I'm shooting for. I'm shooting for little half moon sized pieces that I'm in turn gonna slice to about, I, I think this so I think this is gonna work out well because like I said, I know it's gonna shrink and I wanna be left with something versus just little bitty tiny bites. So we're gonna see how this turns out. Okay, so I have my four trays prepared. And while I'm off to have some fun, this watermelon can be freeze dried. It's watermelon time. See why I cut them into those size pieces? I wanted it to come out to where you could actually enjoy it and not shrink up to bubblegum size pieces. And it didn't. I hope it tastes like bubblegum though. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna pick this one. Doesn't have much smell. But it has a lot of taste. Does it? I love it. Really? Maybe one of my favorites. Really? Okay, so prior to this, a fig would have been my favorite fruit, so to speak. You don't taste it to begin with, but at the end, the flavor's there and it's very good. Wow. So this would be perfect for a snack. I don't plan on reconstituting this because I wanted to be able to pop it in a Ziploc bag and if I'm have an errand to run to use this for a snack. Maybe a new favorite. If if you're a candy person and yes. like candy. Yes. This would be something you would probably enjoy very much. Cause that's what it reminds me of. I've got another watermelon over here. I'm gonna pick up one more because I am really loving freeze dried watermelon. Wow. I think you would too. That is. Uh, it's good. Not what I expected. Cold watermelon hurts my teeth. Uh huh. 
So I either have to eat it, you know, when it's first mm -hmm. out of the rind or I don't eat it because right. it hurts my sensitive teeth. This doesn't hurt my teeth. Wow. That is good. I didn't expect that. Me either. I should have done this a long time ago. And it tastes like real watermelon. It don't taste like that fake watermelon candy. That's exactly right. <laughs> this is the real deal. I'm so glad I did this. But you know what? I cannot let Loretta find out about this. Oh goodness, no. She wow. would um she'd have a big run yeah. if she knew about this. Yes. Yeah.